Hello, and welcome to Learning Science by Being a Scientist. In this video, we are going to explore how and why scientists develop and use models. If you are going to be a scientist, you need to know about models. No, not that kind of model. I mean the models scientists develop and how they use them. So what is a model, scientifically speaking? A model is something scientists use to represent something else, usually something that is too large, too small, too complex, too complicated, or too abstract to just show or talk about. A scientific model can represent a natural process. It can also represent a system. It can represent a natural phenomenon. A scientific model can also represent a prototype or design for a solution you want to test. There are lots of different types of scientific models, drawings and illustrations, diagrams, actual 3D models, flowcharts and graphic organizers, analogies, and formulas are all different types of scientific models. Another way of modeling is through simulations, where you can either act out a process in real life or virtually on a computer. So what do scientists do with all these models? Scientists use models to communicate about things that are too complicated to show any other way. Models are a way scientists communicate what something is, what happens, how something works, how things happen, why things happen. Engineers also use models to communicate their designs. Scientists also use models to test things. Once you have a model that shows how and why something happens, you can use that model to see what would happen if you change something in the system. For example, if you have a model that shows why we have seasons on the Earth, you can use that model to test what would happen if the angle of the axis were not tilted, or what would happen if the angle were greater than it is now. Engineers use their prototype design models to test how effective their designs and solutions are at solving problems and meeting needs. It is much easier to test a prototype model before you build and test the real thing. So, models are a very important part of science and a very important tool that scientists and engineers use. But where do all these models come from? Science, since models are used by scientists to communicate about something that happens, first the scientist needs to understand what is happening. This means investigations and experiments and research. Do you remember what we said about science starting with a question? When scientists have enough evidence to answer the question, one way they will communicate what they have found out about their investigation is by developing a model that shows what happened. If you do an investigation into how evaporation and condensation and precipitation are related, you would organize what you learned about them in a diagram that shows how they are all connected. If you are learning about mountains, valleys, canyons, volcanoes, plains, and islands, you would develop a model to show how these landforms are classified by their different characteristics and features. If you were trying to figure out the best way to light a light bulb, run a fan, and ring a buzzer, you would first draw out a diagram of your circuit before putting it all together or test it. Or you would draw a circuit diagram to communicate to others how you did it. Remember though, that models aren't just art projects. Scientists use models to communicate information and test things. After you develop your model, what you do with it is just as important as how you made it. So there you have it. Models are an extremely important part of scientist work. Once scientists learn about and understand what is going on, she can develop a model to communicate that important information so that others can understand what she has learned. Thanks for watching. Come back soon and watch more videos about what scientists do. And remember, the best way to learn science is to be a scientist. And that means doing what scientists do.